In this video, I edit two wedding images with Capture One Pro. This is the second video in the series. I do recommend watching the first as I talk more about the styles used. Capture One Pro is an excellent tool for wedding photographers. It's absolutely perfect for this type of work. If you're interested in checking out Capture One Pro, then please see the links in the video description. Please give this video a like, it really helps, and also subscribe. The raw files and styles used in this video are available for download. Again, check the video description for a link. Here we have a nice formal image, a secondary image, a conversation piece rather than a showpiece. So it did make it, even though she's pulling a weird face. Let's start by looking at the crop. Let's just select the crop tool to take a look. I've pre-cropped this. I've pre-cropped it down from the whole image to just the torsos and heads. This is just for variation. I've already edited a couple of similar but full body images. I like to supply similar scenes with varying crops and a few quirky shots. When you're supplying over 450 images, every one of them doesn't have to be a perfect pose. Some can be a bit of fun. Okay, let's start with the white balance. I really like to try and get the white balance right early on. Let's try daylight. Okay, I'm not sure about that. It's not really doing it for me, even though it was shot in the daylight. Let's look at cloudy. Okay, that's getting much closer, but I do need to tweak it a bit. So let's have a little play with the Kelvin. Really fine adjustments until you think it's correct. I think that's fine. And also a little tweak on the tint. Just a little bit towards the green about there that's not too bad a pretty good white balance i think now i'm going to add my preset please check part one for a description of this preset wedding basic there we go i have a really nice starting point for this scene i just want to further tweak a couple of the colors i want to deepen the foliage and do something with these blues in the advanced color tab we'll select the green first well, they're selected by default, so let's just make the greens a little bit more blue. I'd like the greens to be a little more bluey green for this scene. I definitely want to desaturate the greens a bit more. Okay, that looks fine. And darken them a bit. I'm using my mouse wheel to change the value here rather than the button. A lot of the time I find it easier to use the mouse wheel to adjust the sliders. That's good, but I want to affect just a little less of the yellows. Okay, I'm liking that. Now I just want to take a look at the blues. I think they need to be desaturated just a little bit. Again, use the mouse wheel just to bring the saturation slider down a tad. They were looking a little bit too saturated against the green, and I know that I'll be adding saturation a little later anyway. Okay, next to the high dynamic range and whack it all the way to 100 and set the shadows to around 25, which is sort of my standard start. Next, I'll open up the histogram so that I can see what I'm doing, and the exposure, and the levels. I can't live without the histogram, it's really handy. Okay, so first we'll go down to the levels and bring up the blacks. This may seem too much, but trust me, it will work when we brighten it. After a while, you just get used to how one tool affects another. Okay, let's bring down the whites. Well, bring up the whites by bringing the right hand handle left. Just until the dress is just under being blown out. We can really lower this because we protected our whites with the highlight slider. Okay, let's look at the exposure. Let's up the exposure just a tiny bit. We don't need much. And then down to the brightness. And let's brighten it up. Using the brightness slider at this point will have a really big effect on the image. It's up to the mid-tones and, and brighten the scene and reduce the contrast. With practice you just get used to these things, how one tool affects another and what you can do now and what you need to do now for later. And now I'm going to just add a little bit more saturation. I think just about 10 will do, a nice round number. I think this edit is starting to take shape, starting to look really nice. Now to add some skin smoothing. 
I have my skin smoothing style here in the styles and presets. The first thing we have to do is to go to the color editor, skin tone tab, have a look, view selected color range. And as you can see, we've got all of the skin selected and a bit of hair, but don't worry, it won't be noticed. Turn that off, three dots and create mask layer from selection. That will create and select a mask for the skin. Go to styles and presets, right click on smooth skin and apply to selected layer. And bingo, the skin will be slightly smoothed. For more detail on skin smoothing, see part one. Next, I'm going to add a vignette, I normally do. Layers and plus. Press T on the keyboard to activate the radial gradient mask. Drag out to create the radial gradient. Center it and widen it a little bit like so. Then over to the exposure tab and lower the brightness just a bit. Okay, that's just about there. I'll do some fine control with the layer opacity. I use this vignette technique to even out the image rather than give a really noticeable vignette and to slightly focus on the center of the screen. I just think it looks a little nicer. Okay, time for cleanup. Grab our spot tool and I can see one right away on his sleeve and another one just here. I'll just reduce the size a little bit, then zoom in a bit and move around to check the photo. And I'll just take out the most obvious little glitches and patches and blotches. Let's zap this really noticeable one on his collar. I'll just reduce the size. Next, get rid of this spot on his neck. That didn't work. Okay, try again. There we go. And he does have a few spots on his face, so let's zap them. I'll just get rid of anything that looks like a zit. He might even thank me later, who knows. Okay, I'm not going to get rid of that. That's actually a feature. I don't touch features, but I will get rid of this little burn. I know it's a burn. She has a little bruise here, which she asked me to remove, so I will. Okay, she's done, so let's move over to sun number two and get rid of the zit. I hope they appreciate this. Now just a quick check down his suit. Now I may miss a few because I'm recording a tutorial at the same time, but I'll have a quick look over it later, just as a final quality check and remove anything else that needs to be removed. Let's zoom out and have a look around just to make sure it's all nice and clean. That looks pretty good to me. As a final step, I'm going to my background and levels and brighten it up a bit more if I can. So I'll bring down my levels just to play with it until I've got maximum brightness but nothing blown out. Small and noticeable parts blown out are okay. A little bit. It's a judgment call really. Okay, and we're done. Okay, let's take a look. Here's before and after and before and after. Great. Here we have the first dance. Doesn't she look happy? It was a great day. I've already cropped and rotated it. I've cropped in to focus in more on the couple, give them more presence on screen, make them a bit larger. And I've rotated the image slightly, as you can see here and here. Just a little rotation to make them more vertical. I'll get rid of the elbow of the assistant photographer in a second. This is going to be quite a fun edit and I'll start with the white balance. And as we have multiple light sources, all different colours, I'm going to adjust the white balance manually. So, there we go, just tweak it. I think about 5725 will be fine for the Kelvin. About two for tint, that's fine, not too blue, orange, green or magenta. Now for the dynamic range, so let's just open that and up to 100 and shadows to about 25 I think, as usual. My standard start point. Next I'll tackle the levels. I'll start with whites, 
because I want to make everything bright. It's the dress and the whites, the highlights anyway. Now I need to adjust the mid-tones. This is a darker scene. And then add a little contrast with the blacks. Here we go. And that looks like a good start for the exposure. Now, at the moment, I'm pretty happy with the overall exposure, but one thing I haven't done yet is to apply my wedding style, which will bring down the contrast a tad. Open Styles and Presets, and click Wedding Basic. So, after adding our Wedding Basic, you can see that the contrast has been set to minus 15, and all I want to do now is just add a tiny little tweak to the exposure. There we go. Just a little brightening of the whole scene. I will be darkening the edges later quite a lot, creating a nice dance floor scene for them. Okay, I'm going to be building up multiple layers to create this scene, layers of light. So I think I'll start with a nice strong vignette. Press T to bring up the radial gradient tool and create a nice circular spot just reaching their heads and then fading out about that much. Now I'm going to bring down the brightness quite far. I'm using brightness rather than exposure to start with as it leaves the highlights, the lights, as they are. Then bring down the exposure to enhance the spotlight effect. That's pretty nice. A good start. I'm trying to enhance their moments, so to speak. I think I'll just give it a little tweak, just expand that a tad more and move it into position. We're starting to get the effect we're after. So next I'm going to lighten them up, lighten their bodies and put a spot by their feet. So let's add a layer, layers and plus, and B for brush. Let's paint in some light. Actually, it's, let's start with the floor spot. So. Let's press T to bring the radial gradient up and stretch it over their feet and up with the brightness, though it's brightening the outside when we want to brighten the inside. So right click on the layer and invert mask. Next we'll stretch to size. We're trying to create a nice spotlight on the feet. I wouldn't go this far with every image, just a few select special ones. So let's increase the brightness. Up oh, we go. I think that's fine. Now to just retweak the size and the fall off. Take a look. Okay, that's brightened nicely, though it is a bit harsh, so let's just tweak it again. Press B for brush, and now I'm going to draw the brightness into the dancers to light them up. As I apply my brush, it looks more and more like a spotlight shining down on them. Shrink the brush to apply light to the more detailed areas, like so. There we go. All drawn in. Now I think I'll just have a little play with the exposure. Let's see if we can just get this level correct. You really do have to play with things to get them right experiment. Okay, we're getting there and I think that's fine. And now they're lit up on the dance floor by a nice spotlight. I think that looks pretty effective. Now I'm just going to use the fall off from a bigger brush just to erase, press E for erase and just erase the light off the sides just a tad, just to make sure it's tidy and more in the center of them. Create some light fall off on their bodies and then brighten a tad. I'm trying to make the light look more 3D than flat, as if it's wrapped around their bodies as real light would be. So that's fine. Now we've got a spot, they're lit up nicely, excellent. Now I'm just going back to the first layer here, just so that I can soften this vignette a bit. It's looking a bit harsh. Again, when you're Doing this type of editing, you will need to go back and forth and tweak things until they're correct. I do want it more focused into them, but I don't want the fall off to be too harsh. That's better. Okay, time for skin smoothing. 
we'll smooth the skin using my style, so here we go. All we have to do to smooth the skin is go to the colour editor, but first make sure we have the background layer selected, then to the colour editor, not the colour balance, the colour editor, skin tone, three dots and create masked layer from selection. It will create a layer and select it for us, so now all I have to do is go to Styles and Presets and right click on Smooth Skin, then Apply to Selected Layer. That's it, the skin has been smoothed. And looking at it, I think I want to make it more dramatic. So if I go to the layers and my big vignette layer here, layer one, and if I increase the contrast by quite a bit, it will bring out the lights and darken the shadows. And now they're in a bright star field against the darkness. We could enhance it even more with the levels, so bring down the lights, bring up the brights, and bring down the darks. That's pretty good. Make sure we get the levels just right. And then press T for the gradient tool. It's still looking a little abrupt, a little harsh. So I'll just soften it up a bit more. And I think that looks a lot more realistic, much nicer. Now I really would like to increase the brightness of this circle at their feet. As I don't want to light them up anymore, I don't want to light their bodies, I just want to light the floor. I'll add another layer, press plus, and press T to drag out another gradient, just affecting the area of the floor where they're standing. Then increase the exposure, like so. And of course, it's affecting the outside again, so remember to invert the mask. Now we can increase the exposure of the light at their feet, like so, and soften it a bit. Okay, that's looking good. Then press E for my eraser, and then set the size to nice and small, and reduce the opacity, and go in and just erase the light away from the bottom of the dress and feet because it looks unnatural as it is. It looks like it's overlaid. And now they're dancing in a circle of light. There's a circle of light at their feet. Looking good. Now I just want to light her face up as she's looking a little dark. So go back to the highlight layer, layer two, and grab my brush with B and just paint the light in onto their heads and shoulders and maybe just increase the brightness a tad more let's take a look okay uh, that looks better in fact it looks a little uneven so I'll get a bigger brush and just go over them and light them up a little bit more more even out the light that looks better that's looking really nice now they're well lit up the center of their own world now I just want to go back to the base layer and increase the saturation a little bit. Make the scene more colourful and dreamy. And just increase the impact by increasing contrast with the blacks on the levels. There's no getting away from tweaking when you're doing this type of edit. Select our spot tool and in we go for a bit of a clean up. First of all. Remove the bruise that she asked me to remove. Then look round, make sure there's nothing else that needs to be removed. It looks like the image is all nice and clean and blob free. A quick look around, we're fine. Now, we did have an elbow in the scene earlier, but because we've darkened the edges, it's gone, we don't need to remove it. Great. I'm not gonna bother trying hunting for it. As far as I'm concerned, that is gone. And we're done. It's quite surprising, amazing really, what you can achieve with Capture One Pro in 12 minutes or so. So let's take a look at our work. Here's before, and here's after, and before, and after.